Now the last step is to sew the binding to the back by hand. So you need some cotton thread, a thimble. I like nimble thimbles. Um, I have more control with them than a, one of the traditional metal ones, and it's, it's leather. Um, so you want to get about uh, from the tips of your finger to your elbow length of thread. Any longer than that, and it will knot up on you a lot, and that is very frustrating. So you want to do a quilter's knot, and to do a quilter's knot, you thread your needle, And then with the side that you didn't cut, you have your needle, I have my needle pointing away from me. And then I'm gonna lay the thread in the opposite direction of the point of the needle. And I'm gonna hold that with my left hand and circle the thread towards me three times. And then I pull the thread down and pinch it between my thumb and my forefinger. And I keep that thread pinched in between that finger, those fingers as I pull the thread up and when you're done you have a nice small quilter's knot. Now to do the fabric, what you're going to do, is now we're going to do a whip stitch and when it's done correctly you can't even see the thread so it really doesn't matter what color thread you use. So I have the back of the quilt up right now, and I'm folding the fabric over. And I'm just folding it, I'm not stretching it or anything, I'm just folding it around the batting and the seam allowance. And I'm going to bury my knot, and to do that, I'm actually putting the needle in about an inch or so away from where the binding comes. And then I'm bringing the needle out right on the fold of that binding, and then I'm going to put my finger where I put my needle in and you kind of hear a little pop as that knot goes through the thread and you're kind of in no man's land when you do that you don't want the fabric or the needle to go through to the front of your quilt you just want to have it go into the, your batting and your backing fabric so now to do the whip stitch I'm going to put my needle into the fabric and this is just in the batting and the backing you don't want it to come through to the front right where this thread came out. So I'm putting my needle in and then I'm bringing the needle back out along the fold of the binding about a quarter inch away from where I started. And I'm going to take a couple of those stitches and then I'm going to leave that in place because it kind of acts as a pin as, actually I need to back up a stitch here in order to get this tucked in here. Remember when we had that little fold, this is where it fits in. Okay, so I'm going to take another stitch going in where the needle came out and coming out about a quarter inch away. And they make binding clips that you can use. They look like big metal hair clips. If, that, if you have trouble holding this fabric in place, you can use those. But you just kind of fold it over with your hands, and then you keep taking the stitch. Putting the needle in, the batting and the backing fabric, but not through the front. And then coming out through the fold of your binding, about a quarter inch away. And keep doing that until you reach the corner. When you need to end a piece of thread, you want to stop when you have about five or six inches left. So you want to just knot the thread twice. And I just sort of put the needle through, and then I use the needle to direct where that knot ends up. And you want the knot to be about a quarter of an inch away from where it comes out of the fold of the binding. And I do two knots and use that needle to make sure that they end up in the same spot. Then I'm going to take a stitch like normal, putting my needle into the batting and the backing fabric and coming out of the fold of the binding. And then I'm going to give a little tug until I feel that knot go through. And then it's knotted in place here. And then you just clip your excess thread 
And then when I start sewing again, I'm going to start sewing a couple of stitches back. And that just helps secure everything um, so that it doesn't come out when you wash the quilts. When you get to the corner, you want to sew all the way to the edge to tack that in place. And then go back to where your seam line is and you're going to put your needle in and then flip it over and you're going to bring your needle out right where the corner of your quilt is, where that binding is. And then you're just going to kind of take a stitch into the bottom of that miter and then come out the top and that keeps that in place. And then at the top of this fold here, you put your needle back through to the back of the quilt. And then we're going to fold the rest of this down to create the rest of our miter. And you want your, if it's possible, you want to get that so that the tip of this fold lines up right with uh, your binding on the other side. So I'm going to continue tacking this down. You need to take a couple stitches at this point, probably two or three. And I always take a real small stitch when I get to this point because I really want to make sure that that stays right even with this. I'm going to take one more small stitch to keep that in place. And then you just keep going on with your whip stitch and do all four corners like that. And it gives you a nice uh, uh, point there on all your corners. When you come to the end, you have this fold here that you need to stitch down the same way we stitch down all those corners. So just continue doing your stitch until you reach that. And then I usually like to make it so that the needle comes out right on that fold like it is right here. And then I'm just going to sort of hide it in the piece of binding behind it and have it come out right along the fold. You're going to keep stitching that all the way uh, until you get to the top of the binding. And you flip the quilt over and just continue down Until you get to the bottom. And then you're just going to knot your thread and bury your needle. The same way we've been knotting it before. Use that needle to direct where that knot goes so that you can have two of them right in the same spot. And then I'm just going to put my needle in pretty close to where that thread came out so that it's going to be invisible when it's all said and done. Bring it out about half inch or so down. Give it a little tug until it pops through. Then I'll just cut that off and your quilt is done. Thank you for following along with the How to Make a T-Shirt Quilt videos. For more tutorials and patterns and instructions, please visit www.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Thank you very much and happy quilting.